What's the mathematical definition of pH? Yeah, negative log of the H plus concentration. But again, H plus is really the same thing as what? Whether you want to call it H plus or H3O plus, hydrogen ion concentration or hydronium ion concentration, same diff. They mean the same thing. The hydrogen ion concentration in water is the hydronium ion concentration. So these are totally equivalent ways of writing something that represents the same thing. OK, so what is POH? Negative log of OH. What does PKA mean? What's P your mom? Negative log of your mom. Awesome. Sweet. Point being here is that P is a mathematical term, and it means? Negative log. And it's negative log of whatever follows, right? And so in this case, obviously, I'm getting a little bit absurd here. But hopefully, points taken home is P anything is the negative log of whatever that anything is. So we'll use this one later as well. But I wanted to make sure you knew what P meant. If you rearrange these, so and in this case, solve for the H plus ion concentration. So if, if you want to rearrange this expression and solve for H plus, what would you do? Yeah, you'd put the negative on the other side, so you have negative pH. And then to get rid of the log, it's 10 to the power of. And so that would get rid of the log, and you'd end up with, on this side, 10 to the negative pH. And same thing here, totally analogously, is 10 to the negative pOH. So for the hydroxide ion concentration. Cool, the last part of this, something you guys probably remember from high school, is that pH and pOH add up to 14. Where does that come from? Yeah, it comes from Kw. It turns out that the hydrogen ion concentration, or hydronium, same diff again, times hydroxide, the product of that is 10 to the negative 14. They call that Kw. That comes from you know, the fact that pure water dissociates to a small extent all by itself and form some H plus and OH minus. If I bought a bottle of the most pure water on the planet, would I expect to find any dog hair in there, in that bottle of water? The most pure bottle of water on the planet? I sure hope not. So would I expect to find any, you know, like sweat in there from one of the workers? No, it's the most pure bottle of water on the planet. However, even the most pure bottle of water, you're not going to find any impurities in there. But you have no choice, because it's water, but to find that it will contain already in there some H plus and some OH minus, because water just happens to dissociate to a small extent. We call this the auto-dissociation or auto-ionization of water. And the equilibrium constant for this, that times that, and you don't divide by anything, because liquids don't show up in equilibrium constants. But at 25 degrees Celsius, the equilibrium constant for this is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. That's where that comes from. They call it Kw. Cool. If you take the negative log of this whole expression, you'll get this with a little rearranging. That's where that comes from. Cool. So here's the deal. We've now got four things. We've got a hydrogen ion concentration, hydroxide ion concentration, pH, pOH. Four different things here. And they're all mathematically interdependent. They depend on one another. If you know any one of these four, you should be able to calculate the other three. Cool. So if in a question I say, I want you to solve for OH concentration, you shouldn't look at that and say, well, how do I get OH? You should look at that and say, how do I get any one of these? Because once I'm able to get any one of these, then I can turn it into OH. Because once you know one of these, you should be able to calculate the other three. Let's take a look at how this works. So what's neutral pH? 7. So we'll start there. Notice if I want a, an acidic solution, the pH has to be lower than 7. And if I want a basic solution, the pH would have to be higher than 7. OK. If the pH is 7, then what's the pOH? 
7, because they have to add up to 14. What's the H plus concentration? Well, 10 to the negative 7 molar. Notice 10 to the negative 7 is the same as 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So if you're putting that in your calculator, you'd put 1 times 10 to the negative 7, because anything times 1 is itself. So a lot of students make the mistake of putting 10 times 10 to the negative 7. Don't do that. That's a different number. It's 1 times 10 to the negative 7 is the same thing as just plain old 10 to the negative 7. And then what would the hydroxide concentration be? 10 to the negative pOH, in this case, 7 as well. Cool. So we started out with just pH 7, and we were able to find the other three. Let's do the same thing here. What if I have a pOH of 2? Who should I pick on? You sat in the front row. What's your name? Michelle. Michelle. So here's the deal. I'm going to ask you a question. And if you don't answer the question in exactly two seconds, I'm going to hurl a marker at your head. <laughs> cool. You ready for the question? You got two seconds. So the pOH is 2. Is that an acidic or a basic solution? <laughs> oh, I would have had to so throw that marker if I was willing to follow through on that. So. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's tricky, isn't it? So that's, that's what I wanted to hear. So she told me the pH would be 12, so it would be basic. So notice, if you're given two seconds to answer this question, given only the pOH, and if it's that acidic or basic, that's a tough question. But we're not used to using pOHs. We're used to using pHs. And if I said the pH is 12, acidic or basic, you're like basic. And it doesn't take even two seconds, right? <laughs> exactly. So here's the deal. If you're asked, if you're given any one of these four and you're asked if the, the solution is acidic or basic, I would recommend turning it into a pH and then answering the question. You can do it from any one of the three, truth be told. I still to this day get a little confused every once in a while and just have by default then I'm, oh, I'm just going to make it a pH because I know how to compare that pretty easily. Okay. If the pOH was 2 again, what is the hydroxide concentration? 10 to the negative 2. What's the H plus concentration? 10 to the negative 12 molar. Sweet. So what if I told you that the H plus concentration was 1 times 10 to the negative 4 molar? My first question is, what's the pH? Negative log of that. Well, it turns out that the log, when you have 1 times 10 to the, you can ignore the 1, right? A log is just, just cancels out the power of 10. So the log of this is negative 4. The negative log would be positive 4. And so the pH is 4. And obviously, I'm doing that in my head, but how are you going to do that if you don't like logs? Use your calculator. Sweet. And now that I know the pH, what's the pOH? And now that I know the pOH, what's the hydroxide ion concentration? And is this solution acidic or basic? It's totally acidic. If you notice on your handout, there's a nice little lovely set of rules that show you how to navigate from any one of these to any of the others. If you have, again, any one of these four, you should be able to calculate any of the other three that I ask you. So, and that sheet kind of gives you a chart that shows you how to navigate around and calculate the, any one of them from any of the others. So let's say I got just a little bit wrong here. And let's say I told you 3.16 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. 3.16 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. And my question for you is first, what's the pOH? I'm going to get all three, but what's the pOH? So actually, no, don't go 10 to the negative. I already have the OH. And if I have the OH and I want the pOH, then I'll take the negative log of that. And what is it? Awesome. And then what's the H plus concentration? I'm sorry, what's the pH? Good. Did anybody think it was 9.5? For whatever reason, totaling out to 14 plays games in your head when you have a decimal. So just double check it with your calculator if you're unsure. I would highly recommend. And then what's the H plus concentration? Ten to the negative. Eight point five molar. Right? It's just ten to the negative pH. Is this can I write it like this? 
Am I allowed to write this like this? I just did. Sweet. OK, so this is not written properly in a mathematical sense. But if you're just working through a solution and just doing your work, great. This looks beautiful. However, if you're looking for this on one of the answer choices, if the goal was to get the H plus concentration, you're not going to see this as one of your multiple choice answers. Plug this into your calculator and let your calculator tell you what this would equal when written pop properly. But if you're just you know, showing your work as you work out a problem, that looks beautiful. Anybody want to give me what that actually is? Cool. But this is generally how this works. We just worked through four examples. But again, if you know any one of these, you know all four of them. This will come up again and again, not just in this chapter, but also again in the solubility chapter in a couple contexts and stuff like that. Questions? OK. You guys ready for the math? The rest of it, now that we know how to calculate any of these four things, which one of these do you think is the most commonly calculated one? The pH, for sure. Technically, we can ask you any of these. It's just we use the pH scale more commonly than anything else. So since we use the pH scale more commonly than anything else, a couple things we should know about the pH scale. So if I have, say, a pH of 5 versus a pH of 8, which one's more acidic? 5, how much more acidic? Ten to the three times more power, more acidic in this case. So the pH scale is a log-based scale. Every pH unit is a power of 10. If you're three pH units more acidic, that's three powers of 10, 10 times 10 times 10, or 10 to the third times more acidic, 1,000 times more acidic in this case. So, and you could figure that out, because you'd be like, oh yeah, pH 5, the H plus is 10 to the minus 5 molar. pH 8, the H plus is 10 to the minus 8 molar. And 10 to the minus 5 molar over 10 to the minus 8 molar is 1,000 times more acid in this case. So you could figure it out. But the big thing here is you can compare them directly just remembering that the pH scale is a log base 10 scale. Notice what other famous scale is a log rhythmic scale? That comes up in the news often these days, it seems. Richter scale, Richter scale. So what does that measure? Earthquakes. So, but it's not a log base 10. It turns out it doesn't use the base 10. But every number on the Richter scale is an earthquake that is 31 times more powerful. So when you hear like, oh yeah, earthquake was 7, 8, they're pretty close. No, they're not. An earthquake of 8.0 on the Richter scale is 31 times worse than an earthquake of 7.0 on the Richter scale. It is a huge jump. And so it makes it seem like it's just a small difference in, you know, oh, 7.0, 8.0, whatever. No, big difference in the strength of that earthquake. So just FYI, it's also logarithmic. Works the same way. <laughs>